All right. Thank you for coming back. In part four, we will learn how we achieve the nice little S shape right here. If you look closely, you'll see that I took these bunches that you should have on yours. See them right there? And I've partitioned them. Two, sorry, two on this side and two on that side. Okay, after you partition them, you're going to want to see the stitch that you originally went over. You're going to want to go right back over that. So, in review, let's take these two right here. And we'll go down, pull through. What I like to do is when I'm coming up around this general area, I also have them hooked together by pins as so they don't, you know, escape me. What I like to do is I like to hold them down and I like to put it through the crease, which is technically what you're supposed to do anyway. So you pull it through, put it down, put it through, pull it, push it up, then we will continue. Now mind you, this can be a very, this whole project in itself is very, very time consuming because realize this one is a very short rough that I am making right now. As I stated before in my previous videos, this one will be for my little daughter who is going to be three years old when the next renaissance fair comes around and I am hoping to make her a little noble girl. And what's a little noble girl without a pretty little ruffle? Okay. But normally your other ones are going to be, you know, from measurements and such to your measurements, which you can either be a real thick necked person or you can be a real tiny necked person. Unless you're like Anne Boleyn who had a gooseneck, which from what I gather is really long and really thin. And I'm stuck on a nail. So, okay. One more stitch to do her. All right. And you notice this is the look we are going after. This nice little S. Because when you hold them together, that's what they should look like. Thank you very much. On to part five. Completing the rough.